Kira, today is the last parliamentary sitting before the November election. MPs are wrapping up the final stages of legislation on sleepover pay, having passed temporary covert surveillance powers for police. The Video Surveillance Act will expire after six months, giving Parliament time to pass the Search and Surveillance Bill when it resumes after the election. The 47,000-tonne cargo ship stuck on a reef off Tauranga's coast continues to leak fuel. Maritime New Zealand is considering how to refloat the Rina and contain the oil spill from it. What was initially a superficial oil slick is now six kilometres long, and Transport Minister Stephen Joyce says the ship is in danger of breaking up. The New Zealand soldier who was killed near Kabul last week has been honoured in an SAS service this afternoon. Lance Corporal Leon Smith was farewelled from Afghanistan with a fierce haka earlier this week before his body was flown home. Today, his commanding officer told around 300 mourners that Leon Smith epitomised the SAS code. A private family funeral will be held in Johnsonville tomorrow. The Māori Party believes two reports into the Urewera raids uncover a miscarriage of justice. MP Te Ururua Flavel wants reports by the Independent Police Complaints Authority and the Human Rights Commission to be publicly released so that people can find out if their human rights were breached. He says the criminal charges some accused still face won't be affected. To international news, a Kabul University plot which aimed to assassinate Afghan President Hamid Karzai has been foiled by officials. The terror cell had met with operatives from Al-Qaeda and the Haqqani network in Pakistan, and they'd also planned attacks in America. The cell included a member of the Presidential Guard, a university medical professor and four students. More than 10,000 demonstrators have marched in Greece, shutting down the Athens city centre. They are protesting against austerity cuts that include tax hikes, pension cuts and massive job losses in the public sector. Their finance minister is warning that the economy could shrink by 5.5% next year instead of the projected 3.8%. And finally, Apple founder Steve Jobs has died after a long battle with illness. He underwent an operation for pancreatic cancer in 2004 and a liver transplant in 2009. Tributes have flowed in for the late innovator. Most of us know him for his iPods, iPads and Mac computers. But NZ Tech podcast Skip Parker says the Apple founder was not only a visionary, but his family was central to his life. His strong family values influenced his work. For example, Steve Jobs refused to allow pornographic applications to be sold on the iPad site. The 56-year-old passed away today, surrounded by his family. Well, that's the news. Remember to check out the first of the election series on Enzo and Focus on Shine TV. From the news team, Hekonera.